Hello everyone. In this video, uh, this is also in continuation to my last video in which I had taken up the definitions of diffusion and osmosis. In this, I will be taking up all these definitions and explaining all the definitions one by one. Very important definitions again. Uh, 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 if you talk about CVSC or SCSC, both. Now, the first definition is imbibition. Imbibition. It is the process in which the living as well as dead plant cells, we have to specify dead plant cells, they absorb water. Simple, take a sponge, put it in water, it will absorb that water. Same is with imbibition. Okay, so what would be the definition? The process by which living as well as dead plant cells, plant cells, they absorb water. Ex uh, example for this would be like the doors, for example, uh, uh, some of the wooden doors, they swell up during rainy season, like they, we are unable to close it. If you see in your houses also, maybe some windows, they are like, you cannot close it, you, you cannot latch it, okay, in after the rainy season. The, answer, the reason for this is that those wooden, the dead cells, the dead plants, wood, what is it, what is it? These are dead plant cells. Those that dead plant cells, they have absorbed moisture from the atmosphere and have swollen. Hence, they are unable to close them. So, what is imbibition? Explain the movement of or absorption of moisture by living and dead plant cells is imbibition. Next is active transport. Active transport, a very important definition. We have done the definition of diffusion. That is the movement of molecules from high concentration to low concentration when they are in direct contact. Osmosis, the movement of water molecules from higher concentration to lower concentration through a semi-permeable membrane. Now is active transport, the movement of molecules from low concentration to high concentration. This is an opposite movement. Normally in osmosis and diffusion we have done from high to low. Here the movement of molecules, not the water molecules, the movement of molecules will take place from their low concentration to high concentration. As we all know, this is opposite. Okay, simple example. Suppose we are climbing up the stairs. We need energy. It's very difficult to climb up the stairs. But when we are moving down, we can easily move down. Okay, same as here that we are moving from low to high. So the plant cells will require energy for this. Here we are going to add up what is the active transport, the movement of molecules from low to high concentration using up energy in the form of ATP flow from the plant cells. Now we have energy, so it will obviously will be taken in the form of ATP, we all know it is the adenosine dry phosphate. Okay, so this process will require energy. One of the major differences between active transport osmosis and diffusion is that this is the only process where energy is required. This comes in one, uh, one mark question also. Name the process which requires energy for its uh, completion that is active transport. Next is turgidity and flexibility. I have written it as a difference. I'll explain it as a difference. What is turgidity? First, I'll give the simple names. Turgidity means stiffness. Okay? Turgid. A cell is turgid. Obviously, when the cell will be filled up with the water, that will become turgid. That will become stiff. And flexibility means the cell is not stiff. What is turgidity? The swelling up of cell by absorption of water is known as turgidity. Flexibility, the shrinkage of the cell by losing water is known as flexibility. Okay? Next is plasmolysis. Now this is the term which is similar to swelling but it is explained differently. It has a different, not a different definition. The definition is same. The uh, swelling up of the cell by absorption of water is known as plasmolysis. That is the process of turgidity is also uh, known as plasmolysis. The definition is the same. That is when the cell swells up by absorbing water. But it has a different term. Deplasmolysis. Now, please carefully listen. What is deplasmolysis? Deplasmolysis is that suppose we take a cell, we put it in water. Okay. First of all, that cell will swell up. Then we will take out the cell and then put it in a 
sugar solution now that cell will lose water and will shrink okay this is deplasmolysis reversal of plasmolysis is known as deplasmolysis if uh, some of the children they say ki ma'am can we write that when a cell is placed when a cell shrinks that is the no in deplasmolysis that is a reversal of plasmolysis first the cell has to swell if we take a swollen cell and then put it in sore solution it shrinks that is deplasmolysis very important what is deplasmolysis the reversal of plasmolysis that is a plasmolyzed cell is known as deplasmolysis there is root pressure now three pressures are there root pressure wall pressure and turgor pressure root pressure first of all the pressure exerted inside the root by the continuous inflow of water now i will explain it with a diagram suppose this is a root here it is continuously absorbing water when it is continuously absorbing water it means it is stiff that water now will exert pressure on the root wall also due to its stiffness that is known as root pressure now what is root pressure the pressure exerted by the cell content or you can say by the conti or you can say the pressure exerted inside the root by the continuous inflow of water is known as root pressure next is wall pressure and turgor pressure you can learn it as a difference wall pressure turgor pressure wall word hai yahan pe so wall means pressure exerted by cell wall on cell content suppose this is a root here so what would be wall pressure the pressure which is exerted by cell content that is cytoplasm which is there over the root wall this will be the wall pressure uh, sorry sorry uh, this will be the turgor pressure the pressure exerted by cell content on the cell wall would be the turgor pressure due to turgidity turgor words come word comes from turgidity the cell will have a condition of turgidity and so the pressure exerted would be turgor pressure wall pressure pressure exerted by the wall of the root on the cell content reverse of turgor pressure the pressure which is exerted by the wall of the root on the cell content is known as wall pressure wall se bana wall pressure jo root wall exert karti hai andar ki taraf pressure that is wall pressure turgor pressure jo cell content bahar ki taraf pressure karta hai turgidity ki wajah se that is turgor pressure next is guttation now here i'll be taking this uh, definition of guttation first of all there are three openings present on the plants suppose we are talking about a plant first opening we all know is stomata which is present over the leaves stomata they undergo the loss of water in the form of water vapor by the process of transpiration what is transpiration loss of water as water vapors from the aerial parts of the plant through stomata is known as transpiration second opening is the permanent opening which is present on the woody stems the stem of the plant it has permanent openings present on them known as lenticels lenticels these lenticels will also perform the process of transpiration that is known as lenticular transpiration the transpiration which occurs through lenticels next is the opening which is present on the margins of the leaves known as hydacodes hydacodes are the openings which are present on the margins of the leaves not on the surface on the margins of the leaves this for example if you are taking a walk uh, early morning in your garden you see through some leaves water droplets are seen on the side of the leaf that process that water droplet has come out of that leaf by the process of guttation and that opening through which that water has come is known as hydacode what is definition of guttation the exudation or sorry the removal or the loss of water in the form of water drops why water drops because transpiration it occurs in the form of water vapors here in the form of water drops through the openings present on the margins of the leaves known as hydacodes 
is known as datation. Once again, what is datation? The removal or loss of water from the margins of the leaves through openings known as hydrocodes is known as datation. Okay, this was datation and transpiration. Next is bleeding. What is bleeding? A very simple definition. If suppose you cut a branch, suppose you cut a branch, water will come out, some sap will come out from that cut part that is known as bleeding. What is bleeding? Exudation of water from the cut part of the plant is known as bleeding okay now i have one by one explained all the definitions starting from imbibition active transport turgidity and flaccidity plasmolysis deplasmolysis root pressure turgor ball gritation bleeding and transpiration okay now in my next video i'll be taking up the experiments related to plant physiology i'll be taking up the experiments one by one which will explain these uh, definitions and would clarify the topic also. Please do watch. Thank you.